Uh, involved with a lot of activist circles and uh, fairly passionate about food justice and the uh, social justice aspects that go along with that and reached a certain point where it seemed like it would make the most sense to uh, farm instead of you know, trying to work in an office or stay in the city. So. The one we do the most of is salad mix, which is over here. Different lettuces, there's mizuno, which is an Asian green, it's a little spicy. Um, sorrel, cress, uh, orac, which is especially green. Yeah, and people seem to like it. The farm has been here for three years. It's been about three years that Seth got it started. Yeah, just about three years. It was about this time of year where he really came and started mm -hmm. digging things up and moving things around and figuring out where he was going to plant everything. I mean, he started off with just the idea that he was going to have just crops. And so he did that and he was selling really well, but he realized that with the, it's so easy to grow things in this county, mm -hmm. um, that there was always going to be a lot of competition. So he mm -hmm. sort of figured out, going to the markets, um, that he, was, he did a lot of really thinking about what was being sold and what wasn't being sold. So then he got the laying hens and started selling eggs, and that went really well. And then the meat birds. So that was his next sort of step from the row crops. The idea of the animals and the row crops together is that we can build soil naturally and try and minimize the amount of uh, fertilizer that's coming in that is relying on fossil fuels and try and minimize our costs. So we rotate fields back and forth. And then people, when he was selling the chicken, kept asking if he had pork. And so he thought, okay, well, there seems to be a market for it. So again, he looked around to see what else was being sold and realized there was sort of a gap in the market for pasture-raised pork. For a while, this was the only pig we were raising, but it's a little difficult to get a hold of them. And uh, it's easier to get the other ones from my closer. It's supposed to be feeding time, so they think I'm going to bring it to um, and then I've got my three ducks back here. They're my personal egg suppliers. <laughs> so she's, we got, she's the, the calmest of them. She's a Welsh harlequin. Um, she's the oldest one, but she's very friendly. She's, she doesn't really mind being handled. Um, so they uh, they live here. I keep kill all my snails and slugs, and I get with the three of them. I get about two eggs a day, um, and that's pretty much that's why I use those for. Those, these are my two oh. boys. Um, this is Romero. These, yeah, yeah, they're very friendly. That's Romero, and that's Nico over there. Um, they don't do anything but uh, make me happy. <laughs> that's their job. Um, yeah, they, I used to do a lot of horse shows and they used to be my horses that I showed and they're both basically pretty much retired. Um, Nico is almost 20 and Romero's uh, 17. They're, 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 they're in some ways, like, they're all the, them or the dogs are my best friends. Um, they're just, uh, they're so much a part of my life. Mm -hmm.